probably familiar with smoked short ribs and they are absolutely wonderful. We're gonna do a grill take on them today with some wine marinated roasted short ribs on the Hasty Bait Charcoal Grill. Let's get going. First thing we're gonna do is take these short ribs, these are absolutely beautiful, and we're gonna put a meat side down in a bowl because we gotta get these things marinating. I like to marinate them for about an hour, so we got a little bit of time on our hands. Once we get them in the bowl, we're gonna cover them with some good red wine. Now, I always tell people, you don't wanna cook with bad wine, so don't buy the cheapest bottle out there. If it's a bottle you'll drink, it's a bottle you wanna cook with. Pour and go. We'll let these marinate for about an hour. It's gonna tender up, it's gonna infuse some awesome flavor. Then we'll get them on the grill. These beef ribs have been soaking in this red wine for about an hour. They soaked up a lot of juice. We're gonna hit them with some seasoning and get them on this Hasty Bake grill. The way we set up the grill was real simple. I wanna grill these things off on the front end, kind of get a nice sear on them, build a crust on the outside, and then we're gonna do a slow smoke on them to kind of bring them up to temperature. The way I do that is I put some raw charcoal in the firebox that's not lit, and then I dump about half a chimney into that firebox on the side. We're gonna grill these off on the hot side, and then when we drop the firebox, that fire will slowly start eating into the other charcoal coal to kind of have a nice long smoke. We're going to move these things out. We don't have to slather these with anything. They're already plenty wet from the wine. You can see it's changed the color so it's added a really nice tannin flavor into it. Today we're going to do a combination of some hoggy toddy holy moly and some all queued up big red beef. Probably should open this before I use it. <laughs> It's always good to use a little bit more than one seasoning because you want to build some flavor layers. So this big red beef is going to add a lot of color. It's going to help out that wine as well. That holy moly is going to add that extra pop of flavor that makes everything taste a little umami. You don't have to season the bone side when you got ribs this big because there's no meat under there that you're going to be eating. But make sure you hit all the other sides nice and thick. It's a big cut of meat and the seasoning on the outside has to last to really get that flavor to the inside. So don't be afraid to season quite a bit. and the holy moly. Press that seasoning into the meat really well. You wanna make sure it sticks to the meat and not the grill grate. Got a nice fire all queued up over here. You like that, all queued up? We got this fire nice and hot. We're gonna go ahead and move these over. We're gonna grill them off, get a nice sear on the outside. Because of the way we set up this fire, I got a hot fire right here and I got some unlit coal over here that that heat's gonna move over to. So I'm putting these directly over the hot fire. I have my hasty bake in the bake position. So it's not all the way up, it's not all the way down. It's right in the middle. That's one of the big advantages to the hasty bake is you have so much control over your fire, you can really make it do anything you want it to do. As soon as these have a nice sear on them, we're gonna go ahead and move the fire all the way down to the smoke position, turn the hasty bake into a smoker, let them gather up all that nice B&B hickory smoke. As you can tell, these beef ribs are nice and seared off. Beautiful flame kiss on it. We're gonna do what the hasty bake does best. We're gonna move that fire box down, turn this thing into a smoker. A little crank of the handle. This thing goes all the way down. And now those are gonna smoke to perfection until we get a nice internal temperature that's gonna make them super tender. So this is a great take on the normal beef ribs. Like I said, we didn't smoke these off like barbecue ribs. We did a wine marinade on them. We grilled them and seared them and then got them up to temp. So I wanted to take these to about 210 degrees, which is pretty far up there, but it's not quite fall apart tender. I want a little bit of a bite on them. If they fall apart, you're not gonna get that real kind of whiny taste that we get when we marinate in wine. Uh, so the slices work a little bit better, but you can see they're really, really squishy, really tender. They jiggle, jiggle. 
looking forward to biting into these. I like to serve them when I cut them off the bone. When you have them on the bone, they tend to kind of grab a little bit, but when you cut them off the bone, they just eat a lot better. You can slice them up. That's what we're gonna do right now. Go ahead and take this one, give it a good slice. And you can see that meat on the inside. All that fat's rendered out. Nice and squishy. Here's the real question though. It can look as good as you want it to look. How's it taste? Hot. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> the right it tastes there. hotter than I thought it was gonna taste. Is <laughs> water there? No, I'm good. I got it out. These can look as good as you want them to look, but let's see how it tastes. So good. Now beef is really fatty and rich anyway, and when you throw that wine on there, it takes that richness to a new level. So sometimes it's really nice to cut it with something acidy, kind of like a chimichurri or some other sauce that has some citrus in it. These are also really good if you just dice them up and put them in tacos, slice them out and put them on a sandwich, or just eat them on their own, you know, maybe with something nice like some white rice or some quinoa or something like that, a good salad. They got a lot of fat, a lot of flavor. We cooked them to a really good tenderness. I mean, they just pull apart like absolute butter. But man, that wine, that smoke, that hickory smoke we did, that char when we put it over the flame, all of it adds to just an absolute perfect bite. A really great meal. Beef ribs are pretty easy to find, so try some, throw it in your backyard, put it on that hasty bake, get that flame kiss on it, get some smoke. Like I said, make sure you're using a good wine because you don't want to cook with bad wine. All those flavors together make an absolutely killer meal. Thanks for being here, we'll see you guys next time.